a short little video to uh, show the uh, 4BT Cummins diesel in the uh, RV. So in order to make this actually fit, I had to um, put in a sister frame. And the, uh, the frame that runs along the side of the actual Lachero frame uh, brings down an area that I mount uh, a Crown Victoria front suspension. But the, uh, the motor itself is mounted towards the front. Some of these 4BTs have mid mounts. This one had front mounts with the uh, rubber mounting. And it's, it's got an intercooler, of course, and um, intercoolers in the front here. And uh, I had to make a custom mount for the uh, air pump in order to give me power brakes. Don't have air conditioning on here just yet. And uh, the uh, power steering, of course, has a mechanical. It would be the geared pump that comes out the back of the, uh, the front of the um, section here. You can't see it, but it's on the other side. So, um, of course, it's a diesel. And I uh, had to put in a different braking system compared to the original Lachero. And I don't know, I think that's a, a Dodge V10 breather system there. And I've got the plumbing pumped uh, up here so that we can actually see the fuel pressure when it's running. And that tells me if I've got some problems in the rear uh, with fuel being fed up here. So I have an electrical pump in the back that pushes it to the front where the mechanical pump does the, uh, the rest of the work. Let me show you a little bit of a picture of the uh, motor mounts and the uh, suspension. So this isn't pretty, but it's giving you a view of that sister suspension I was telling you about. Um, it's got a piece of uh, quarter-inch tubular steel, or, or, or flat steel, that joins it to the frame. And this is two sections of steel that have been welded together. And the motor mount is here, which uh, holds up the engine with some rubber. Uh, uh, I think they're, if they're not liquid filled, there's something filled that, that you know, uh, motor mounts that kind of takes away a little bit of the shake. And of course there's an oil pan. And here we've got the Crown Vic uh, rack and pinion uh, system. And you can see where that Crown Vic suspension is bolted through the frame all the way to the top, uh, locking it in to that frame. Um, I had to cut away a section of the Lachero's original uh, wheel well there so that the uh, uh, upper arms could uh, be adjusted and everything fit smoothly. And uh, that's the Crown Vic suspension. Okay, on the back of the Crown Vic uh, front suspension, of course, it's got a rear strut arm system, and that strut arm had to be supported, and that's tied into the body as well. You can see how it's kind of bolted to that rear strut arm, and that black bar, uh, heavy-duty steel, goes up to the body and attaches. And from this angle, you can see the five-speed transmission. Here's those, of course, uh, heating lines that go back to the back of the Lachero. There's a transmission cross member. It's a five-speed Ford uh, F-250 transmission. I've got a two-piece drive shaft. You can see where it goes. Now, ignore that white box. That's the uh, um, where we've got an actual pump that pumps out uh, the wastewater. But I've got a two-piece drive shaft. And... Um, that two-piece drive shaft goes back to a Ford 9-inch rear end that we had built. Um, it's got 325 gears, <clears throat> drum brakes on the outside, 69 plus inches wide, about as big as you can get for a uh, Ford rear axle. And here's that yoke on the two-piece drive shaft. You can almost see it there. And of course I got a single exhaust coming back exiting on the other side. And there's a view of the uh, rear axle. Original leaf springs uh, with a little bit of helper springs I got in there. And I've got uh, some other um, uh, leaf helper springs that help the uh, ride uh, be firm enough to be able to uh, carry this load. And of course we got uh, five uh, lugs on 4.5 inch. It's a Ford pattern. Uh, these are on some Mickey Thompson rims and um, got some Nokian tires, some really good tires for summer or winter and summer rather. 
Then the helper spring, which I did an install on, it actually adds additional leaf strength to the rear suspension. And that thing has just been awesome to uh, keep us from bottoming out, quite frankly. So when I set this thing up, I, I could have probably raised her up a little bit, but this is about the height that I could get to make both ends match each other. Here you can almost see the leafer spring mounter that mounts it and the front and back has this uh, system. I'll show an image of it here in just a moment of the uh, component I put in there. Just a standard exhaust. Um, I believe it is a three inch exhaust. I'd have to go back and look at my notes. Nothing too fancy. We decided just to make it simple where it exits um, behind the uh, the door back here. And, uh, I don't think you can see much of the turbo stuff back here. Let me see. Nope. And of course that's the exhaust. That's the transmission cross member there. That's that frame rear strut Crown Victoria support which bolts up into the frame. And it bolts up into my original uh, augmented frame that I put in so that not only is it you can see those two bolts, the big bolts there. It's got a quarter inch steel on the other side of this that is running perpendicular up until this midpoint and it does the same thing in the front so it's not only welded in to the frame on the other side of this it's bolted in uh, as well. That helped me get the uh, kind of alignment geometry set up so that it had the right um, angle I believe it's a couple of degrees towards the rear to allow the wheels to be at the right uh, pinion or uh, caster angle um, so that it would ride properly. And of course, I guess from here you can see the engine, of course. You can just about see the exhaust where it comes down there. And I need to do a little bit better job of painting some of the areas down here to protect them from rust. But you can just about see... Uh, all the different uh, steel sections that I had to weld together in order to support uh, this frame.